Before we start programming, we need to know something about the tools that we're going to use. I personally like using the command line as my main environment for working on a computer. Um, and for that reason, I will wind up using the command line for the first part of all of these videos until we get to the point where we're using Eclipse for, for larger projects. Even with Eclipse, it's good to have the ability to use the command line. The command line gives you a certain level of power that you don't have when you are using uh, graphical interfaces. I will be using a Linux command line. If you happen to be using a Mac, the console for a Mac is technically a Unix command line, but everything works on it in pretty much the same way. If you happen to be a PC user, you have a few options. You can get a basic command line that is Linux-like for your PC by downloading and installing SIGWIN. That is C-Y-G-W-I-N. I can type that in so that you can see how it's spelled. C-Y-G-W-I-N. If you do a, a search for that, you will find that it's there's an installer and you can put that on your Windows machine. You can also use a virtual machine. This will actually give you some capabilities. For example, once we start talking about graphics and GUIs, SIGWIN won't work quite as well. A virtual machine will give you basically a full version of Linux running inside of a Windows under Window. Uh, and so I would, if you're going to do that, one that's free is VirtualBox. And so if you search for VirtualBox, you will be able to install that. And then you can install Linux inside of VirtualBox. There's also VMware Player. Now VMware, VMware Player. VMware has many products. They will be very happy to sell you. They do have a basic player that is free and you can use that, though it will ask you at a regular basis if you want to, to buy things. VirtualBox is just completely free and open source. If you really want to have the full experience of using Linux, though, you can dual boot. So you can make it so that your computer will boot both Windows and Linux. The instructions for that are changing all the time, so you should probably do a, a web search and find out what to do with the version of Windows that you happen to have. Okay, so this is what a command line looks like. Why would we want to use it? Well, the way you're probably used to using a computer is with something like this. Okay, this is a graphical interface. I just double click on it and it pops up a little window that has stuff inside of it and I can double click on things to move around. Okay. Uh, typically, we refer to these as folders on a GUI and they're drawn as folders. The advantage of the command line is that instead of double clicking on things, we type in commands. And now, you might think that doesn't sound like much of an advantage, except for the fact that it actually gives you a lot more power. When I click on something, all that I can do is you know, a single click, a double click. I can do a right click and I get a few more options, but I can't give it much information. It's gonna do whatever it does, and then I have to click on more stuff to give it more information. With the command line, you can give arguments. You can tell it additional information right there, and that gives you the ability to have more power in what you are expressing when you run a command. In addition to that, there are times where you want to do something not once or twice, but a thousand times, 10,000 times. Having to point and click on 10,000 things becomes rather tedious after a while. And so when you use a command line, it's possible to run the same command over and over again in a much more efficient way than what you would do through a graphical interface. The other reason why it's nice to have the command line is that sometimes the graphical interface just isn't doing what you think it should be doing. And there are lots of times with students, for example, when I start using Eclipse as the IDE, where they run into problems. And Eclipse isn't helping them to know what's going wrong. Okay? So instead of just bang your head against the screen or the keyboard, we go to the command line and we can look around in their folder with the command line, we can run things, and it actually gives you a lower level ability to figure out what's going on. So for that reason, it's very good to have command line as a skill in your toolbox because it gives you the ability to do things that you couldn't do otherwise. So that's the basics of what a command line is and why we're gonna use it. 
The other downside of the command line is you have to learn certain commands. Whereas with a point and click interface, it's fairly intuitive. I just click on things and stuff happens. With the command line, you have to learn certain commands. So we're gonna go through several videos introducing the different commands that you can use and getting you set up so that you can do basic command line work.